everyone, and welcome to To Have a Troll, the podcast. Da, da, da. My name's Oliver. I'm here with Robin. Hey, Robin. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, I just love the. Da, da, da. Da, da, da. <laughs> <laughs> Bring the energy for the podcast. I'm totally not uh, absolutely exhausted after our uh, another another amazing weekend at Empire LARP um, System E3. So this is our review of. Well, uh, it, th- th- these have gone past reviews now because we're like hooked. So yeah, it, it's just us like going on and on, be like, and then we did this, and then we did yeah. that, and then we met this person. <laughs> so I don't know whether this is like a a LARP term or a UK LARP term or an Empire LARP term. So one of the uh, phrases is uh, frothing. So like LARP froth, which is just oh yeah, yeah, just talking about LARPs. I I don't actually know whether that's a community term a broad community term or not I, but I, I my understanding was froth is a generic term for like it's not a larp term but it's for like anything like cosplay frost or oh really because i hadn't like, yeah it's heard just of like it. you I know heard it a ton when i joined the larp community yeah like i've heard it a few times i just always assumed it was just like yeah when you're excited about something and just like talking about all the bits associated with it yeah, yeah. Well, well. But apparently, this is this is LARP froth. Uh, this is what we've been producing. Even though I didn't know we were producing LARP froth, we are. It's, God, that sounds wrong. <laughs> what do you do? Well, we made it five seconds time? into the video. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do in your spare time? I create froth. Um... Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah. The, so the. Uh, kind of patting ourselves on the back a bit the the podcast um this event i had we had a lot of people um and if you did come up to us and tell us you enjoyed the podcast thank you very much again um it's always good to know people are like listening and people had some value from it um yeah so so many people came up to like say that they had um enjoyed the podcast or or had you know just enjoyed us and things so yeah thank you to everyone who did come up and say that um I had a couple of people that mentioned while we were in character a couple of people who were like oh I'm really sorry I just want to say I really love the podcast just want to say that's wonderful absolutely wonderful yeah yeah it's yeah I'll, I'll, I'll never I mean unless I'm like in like in the middle of like a heated battle or I'm in a very <laughs> intense conversation like i won't mind interrupting the game for like a slight second just to talk about that type of thing yeah um, absolutely fine because <laughs> it, it does it, it it really um yeah it, it, it's really encouraging to hear especially because i had a couple of people say that they like new players um in fact more than a couple of brand new players this event uh said to me that they found value in the podcast easing themselves in you know which is yeah. It's always good, isn't it, to hear? Because I, I know that I listened to, before I came, I listened to a, the first few episodes of um, the LARP Noobs podcast. The, yeah, the, you the, did. The, the guys that go over there literally just get a feel of, of what it was like, you know, and they did a really good job of just describing their first interaction with the game, you know, and their first experience. Um, so I'm, I'm glad that we, we could do the same for other people, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You- that's exactly what I was thinking there. It's wonderful being able to do that for others since so many people and so many content creators did it for us when we were first getting into it. And I say when we're first getting into it, we've only been to three events, but it's um, <laughs> it's pretty incredible how much we've learned just in that short period of time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, enough patting ourselves on the back. So we... <laughs> we, uh, yeah, so do you want, should we just talk about what happened on uh, Thursday, Friday? We'll, we'll just we'll talk and see how many episodes this turns into. Yes, I think that's a wise idea. So if we start off, so this time, yeah, we actually managed to get there on the Thursday this time. And we got there early on the Thursday. Like there was hardly anyone in the Dawn field when we got there. So we were able to pitch up quite easily and quite early on, which was really nice. Yeah, I think but being there the first day is, is great. Uh, there, there is There can be a pro- an issue, with them. I might talk about that in a second, um, with showing up on the Thursday. But no, you, you're completely right. Having, thing is, E1, we were there early-ish. Yeah. 
and we didn't know anyone. We were like at the end of the field and we had never been on the field before. We didn't know the nation. We didn't know anything. So like it was a bit, almost a little bit like, oh, you know, we're a bit lost. This yeah. time we had our, uh, we still pretty much had the same spot. We were just on the other side of the road. From the oh, book. I wrote a spot this time. Oh my gosh. I could not have asked for a better spot. Oh, it's just like, the best. It's just the best. It was, well, not only were we on the Glory Square, but we were on the like corner to the road at the Glory Square, which meant we had so much space around us. And we were able to, because of course we did our our usual with our, our coffee stand, which is now our, our usual. Um, yeah. So we had our coffee and our water and everything set up. So many people were congregating around our tent every day yeah. um, at different points of the day just to, yeah, sit down, have a drink and so on. So I think that spot was wonderful for that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, like you say, when we showed up, we were one of the first people like literally on the on the dawn camp. Um, yeah. And because we were the glory square was already laid out. And the road was already there. It was so easy just to be like, you didn't feel like, oh yeah, we've got to make sure that everyone has room like behind us and how many tents have they got? It was literally just like, well, if we set up, then everyone can just set up behind us because we're in the corner. So we And it worked to- out really well, actually. I think we managed to get right in that corner and then, yeah, we just, everything went, it just fell into line after that. Yeah. So that's that's one plus about being there the, the Thursday. Uh, one bad thing about being there the Thursday is that I'm, and I'm pretty sure I've heard a few people calling it the dangerous Thursday night because, and it was definitely, I definitely understand why now because I may have, may have overdone it on the, on the drink and the celebrations uh, <laughs> and the excitedness of being back with, with friends on the field. Um, cause it's a, it's a real cool atmosphere on the Thursday cause it's not in character, but everyone's got all their stuff set up. And everyone's just walking around, you know, they haven't got stuff to do in character. So everyone's just like drinking with whoever they bump into. But yeah, it's really, and because it was a really warm summer's night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we it, everyone stayed up very late. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it was just, um, yeah, like you were saying, that sort of buzz of having everyone there, um, <clears throat> but just not quite their characters yet. It was just wonderful. Um, also on the Thursday, we had we had a super fun night on the Thursday, actually. Um, we ended up playing a D&D one shot, a Curse of Strad one shot. Yeah. And that was incredible sitting in a LARP field with all these tents around us, campfires, just playing D&D. Well, yeah, so we were right next to the Desandrus tent because they basically just moved slightly closer to each other because we we're like testing we're doing a test for house Desandra, So we're like, we, yeah. we, we got to hang out with them. They've got a real cool, like uh, literally a cool marquee um, type tent, which is really, which is really handy. And they had a large table under there. Um, and, a, and a few of Danny's friends on the Thursday night were like, Oh yeah, we're going to play some D and D. And we just kind of went, Oh, D and D our ears perked up. <laughs> and we were like, yeah, we'll play some D and D. And we played a curse of Strahd one shot, which, so they're like, oh yeah, we're just rolling characters now. And I'm just like, oh, I got my phone out, d d Beyond, you know, just did a, qu- a quick um, quick build character. And within like two minutes, I had a character ready to go. <laughs> yeah, it was great fun. I think the, and we've mentioned this before as well. It was um, really funny sitting there playing d d Everybody's there because we're all there for LARP and there's LARPers walking past us going, and all we could hear was people being like, are they playing D D? Nerds. Yeah, I know, yeah, that was, <laughs> like, oh that was quite surreal. Like, people. I think people were both like impressed and shocked that we'd come all the way to play LARP, you know. And uh, instead, we were sitting down playing D D. <laughs> we couldn't even no, wait. No, that was amazing on a Thursday. And yeah, like you already said, we definitely because. I guess when you're sitting down playing a game like D&D, you end up drinking quite well. We end up drinking quite a bit. But we had bought beer like for the whole weekend. And we ended up having to go out again the Friday to get more beer because we had so much on the Thursday night. (laughs) Yeah. Even though I didn't quite want to, like the Thursday was... Well, actually the Friday was worse for the... A lot worse for the heat. So, um, sorry. sorry, yeah, Yeah, the Friday was worse for the heat. So I was glad that we had got there the Thursday, set up early, 
had all the Thursday night and then Friday all we had to do was just like chill because there were people showing up on the Friday and the heat was the heat was almost unbearable actually how hot it was on the Friday a lot of people on the Friday um I'd spoken to quite a few people who were setting up and they were constantly having to take breaks like set up part of their stuff and then just go away get a drink just calm down a bit because it it was that that temperature where I think it was quite easy for people to end up with heat stroke. It was so humid, you mm. know, it was, it really was. And it was that, it was real sunburn weather as well. You know, it was, it was slightly overcast. And uh, so it was just, just really, really close, really, yeah. really dehydrating. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was good just being able to get up, not actually have to do anything until like 6 p.m. And thankfully on that day, timing was at 6 p.m. And it, it the temperature just kind of, slowly declined at that time of day which was really good um because it got darker a little bit earlier than it did in june so that's um that was definitely a plus it was also great as well to because we like you said we ran out of beer because we went we went crazy on on thursday uh we ran out of drink we so we went you know what we'll we'll head to we ran out of food as well um (laughs) so even though it's a pain in the ass like leaving the campsite when you're already there um, it was good to have the entirety of the Friday to just be like, right, we're just going to head out to the supermarket. And I think we, we just sat in McDonald's for a little while in the air conditioning. <laughs> yeah, because basically we like, obviously we had our Thursday night and then Friday morning we did our, um, did our coffee set up, gave people coffee and then went, you know what, we're set up, we're good. Let's just head out and restock on a few things. So we did that. And then, yeah, like like you said, Oliver, it was that way. It was I forgot how hot it was until you said that we were sitting in the air conditioning in McDonald's because that's yes. right. We went in, thought we're just gonna have a proper like meal just now because yeah. we're pretty we're it's pretty rubbish for remembering to eat <laughs> <laughs> a proper McDonald's meal. Uh, yeah. I meant a meal that was very carp heavy. We're just like gonna take it all in, had some cold drinks, and then just rested for i think we were only gone like an hour or something tops so. yeah yeah exactly it's, it's just it, it it's quite good as well what i might do if we get there the thursday next time is not take so much supplies uh get there set the temp, tent up and then do the same thing again friday morning head out get more charcoal for the fire get more snacks food yeah beer instead of carrying instead of taking all from home out to the campsite like i said it's a pain in the ass like having to go get your vehicle again then drive out and then drive back but if you've got all day to do it it's not that big a deal exactly the full day really helps so yeah obviously we did that on the friday and most of friday was spent you know just chilling out we did some shopping we just had a lot of a lot of fun meeting each people again and then we got um we got all charactered up, didn't we? Yeah. Well, you, you bought a sword. You bought you another... I bought another sword. You bought another sword from Light Armour. I have so many swords. <laughs> you have so many swords. So, we, yeah. And we, you got a sword. Yeah, I got a sword, but I didn't get the sword until Saturday. Oh, yeah. I yeah, thought you when, got it on Friday. Actually, when, when did I get it? You no, got no, it on I, Friday. I got my sword on Thursday. What did I get it on Friday? Maybe I yeah, because I got mine Thursday because we were setting up. And they were like, oh, we're going to start rolling characters. And I was like, I'll be right back. I saw a sword I want. And I ran off and got a sword to came back. I was like, I got my sword. (laughs) Yeah, I think think I got my, yeah, it must have been the Friday I got my. Yeah, it was a Friday because I think um, we were like getting ready because we put some of our kit on first because then we wanted to go try things on with our kit. Yeah. And then we were back and forth. And then I think you were like coming and on. You were like playing with the sword. You're like, I really want it. And I went back to camp. And then I was like, just go get the sword. <laughs> you were like, yay, sword, 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 sword. <laughs> well, the thing is, my, my plan was to like get like a mace or something for monstering, basically. Because my, my normal sword that I have is a little bit too like fancy and dornish for monstering. So I wanted something yeah. that would suit monstering. So... My original idea was that I would cover my shield, get a shield cover, and so I can monster with a shield and then have like a mace or something. Um, but then I was looking at the uh, the two hand the two handed weapons, and I was like, oh, I just I really want to, I want to play with the two handed weapons basically. <laughs> like I wanted a, I wanted a two handed sword. Um, <laughs> it, but the thing is, it's something my character just w- won't use. 
Um, well, I mean, you might do at one point. We, I, you never know. Um, but I'm definitely like sword and board style. So I was like, you know what? I'm no. I'm gonna get a. I'm gonna get a, a two handed sword because I can use it one for other LARP systems if we do. Um, yeah. I can use it for cosplay, and because having a two hander, you know, barbarian cosplay or something, something of that, something of that nature. And I'll use. I'll get to use it for monstering. Have a bit of fun monstering, you know, because I won't. I'm not being. Uh, you know, I'm not. I'm not being self presentatory with you know, my monster character, so I can just go berserker and try and try out the two handed way of fighting. Exactly. It also because you and I like to like play with swords and stuff at home. It means it's another like thing that we can um, fight with and and practice with as well. It's yeah, exactly. quite cool. Exactly. So <laughs> so yeah, I couldn't couldn't help myself. So I got that one from Eldridge, the Eldridge place, um, which yeah, that, it's it's really lightweight you know, for a two-handed sword and it's just, it really, it's, it's not the longest, but I'm not the tallest pe people anyway, you know, I'm only five foot ten, so, um, five foot eleven on a good day. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, some of these two-handers are like, uh, are, are, are crazy, um, and they're kind of difficult to swing around, but the Eldritch stuff is, is really good. Don't give, don't give me that look. Right. Don't give me that look. Oh, come God, I've been so good. You're talking about needing two hands. You're talking about swinging it around in sizes. Come on. <laughs> I'm trying here, okay? I'm trying. <laughs> what type of podcast do you think this is? Oh, no. <laughs> Only LARP. Oh, we get, it, it, gets, it gets worse. It gets worse. Yeah, from, from what I uh, gathered from this weekend, it's probably the, the type of thing the orcs would talk about if they had a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> So, so oh, before we get into the role player as well, I will uh, say that my shield turned out absolutely fucking amazing. Oh yeah, um, no, I this shield so is shit. Oh yeah, yeah. So I, I basically, I, I remade it. So I like cannibalized my old one because <laughs> uh, I, I kind of min maxed when it came to the dimensions of the last one, but it was too, it was too, and the foam that I had used, I made it very hardy. Um, cause I used like high density foam, but it just made it too heavy. Um, so I actually got in contact with, uh, polyprops, which I heard that a lot of LARPers use, um, polyprops are, um, a company we already knew from like cosplay. So I literally, yeah. I, literally emailed I had no them. idea they were doing LARP form until we, yeah. Checked. So I emailed them and just went, Hey, you know, what, what are people using? I've heard that people use your, uh, stuff to make LARP weapons which foam are they using for shields? And they steered me in the right way. So they, they use, yeah. I can't remember, I can't remember it's because it's not EVA foam, it's another type of foam, but it's the difference was that EVA foam gets really malleable when it gets hot. So especially in the hot weather, that's why my handle came loose last time was because yeah. the entire shield became so wobbly last time in the heat. Um, so the, the main covering of the shield the main body of the shield is made from this other other foam it's like it's quite it's, it's low density but it doesn't you can heat form it but it doesn't when it gets hot it doesn't change shape it's quite unique isn't it actually that yeah. sort of um yes yeah, ld yeah. ld something or other um i'll put i'll put links in the in the thing if, if people are into crafting um at one point we'll probably do a crafting um episode of the podcast and we'll talk about making um making a lot of weapons, making a lot of shields. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah it was the LD45, I That's think. That's it, yeah, LD45. Yeah, so um, it's a plastisoat LD45. That's it, plastisoat, yeah, I couldn't think yeah. of that, yeah. So so I, I used that, and then I used um, high-definition EVA foam for the detailing around the edge. So last time I made the, the edge really narrow because I wanted to make it look really flat and thin, which I did, which is like a cosplay technique. And it looked thin, but the problem was because people kept hitting it, it would it wasn't strong enough and it would like crush. Um, I also only put the isoflex on the on the front of this last shield, which was fine. Um, but the reverse had like a PVA based uh, paint on the inside, and I was like, oh, that side's yeah. not going to get hit. It's going to be fine. But it bubbled in the hot weather last time. Oh, we literally, it was the last time when we put it down the grass outside, yeah. started setting up the tent, and then we came out and it was like, oh no, your shield's bubbling. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, bubbled. And then the, yeah, the handle um, it was fine. It was covered in foam to make it safe, but the foam got really slippy as soon as my hand got sweaty. So I rectified all that, basically. Yeah. So now, now I've got like a, a, a thick edge on it. I, sh I shortened the height of it a bit, so it's just easier to maneuver around. 
Um, cause the, cause using the maximum specifications isn't always great for the way you fight. Um, and I'm yeah. trying to leather wrap the, the handle. So it is, it's way more, but what I do need to do, um, is I'm going to put holes in the back part of it so I can have a spare sword into it. Um, so I don't have to carry a sword on my belt. I, I saw a lot of people have the swords in their shield. So I saw so many people did that. Um, it seemed like such a good idea. Yeah. I mean, we can both sit and do some crafting because I'm hoping to craft some weapons before E4. So Ooh, we could maybe, Ooh. yeah, some uh, throwing knives. Yeah, throwing knives. Yeah. 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 Well, I guess we'll talk about that. Um, because we talk about like leveling up, not leveling up, but we're spending our experience points. Well, I mean, we can't. We can talk about that now and just get out of the way, I guess. Um, so uh, yeah, after this event, uh, so I, I guess there's the spoilers as well. Like both our characters survived the. <laughs> we're live. Yeah, well, both our characters survived <laughs> the event, so we got a another experience point because that's our third event. So yeah. you get you get one experience after one event, um, and after your third event in the in the same year, you'll get another point. So basically, if you uh, one to two events, one point; three to four events, another point. So we got our yeah. second point of the year. Um, so I I retrained my point from Juggernaut because I had Juggernaut this year, and you have to be wet because I only had one point to spend last time. What I've actually done is retrain Juggernaut, and then ha so I got that point back. I put another two points into uh, Bull's Endurance, which gives me a universal hit, basically. Oh yeah, so, yeah. So basically without so if I've just got clothing on, I'm walking around, I've got I've got a universal three hits at all po all points instead of two. Um so technically uh, it's got the, um, the same amount of hit points armored up, but I just thought that's actually just I think it's better to have um that universal hit, you know, so if I'm wearing yeah. padded armor, leather armor, no armor, I've still got that extra hit point. Yeah, exactly. Um, I just spent one point. Um, so the point I got, I didn't retrain anything. Um, I spent it in throne um, for throwing weapons. It seems to be a bit of a joke one. I've noticed a lot of people kind of like joke about people having the skill. Yeah. Um, but I decided that since I'm ambi, I I do tend to try and get quite close into people's faces when I'm fighting. Yeah. But I think um, a load of throwing knives would be really beneficial maybe not so much for out in the battlefield but in tournaments and things it'd be quite handy to have those sort of things um so yeah we're gonna yeah. give that a go and see because the thing is with that is i can also get like throwing axes hammers anything but yeah. i think i'm gonna go down the route of some fancy knives and I want to play about because I want to make some, but I want to play about with the different painting techniques and maybe make them look like they're gold or something like that. I thought that'd be quite cool. Nice. So yeah. I'm going to aim. This, this is someone who's never played a rogue in D&D &D and refuses to play one. <laughs> and you're literally playing just <laughs> just this rogue. in. <laughs> in well, the thing is, like, after E1, a lot of people called me the short, stabby person. Yeah. So that's just come from there. And now it's just like, okay, I guess I've just turned into a rogue. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. We're gonna make it work. I mean, it'd be cool. <laughs> it'd be cool if you started like at, not ambi, but like literally having two throwing weapons at the start of the battle, and as you're running in, you just go because that that totally throws people off when you're charging because people hardly ever throw when they're charging. <laughs> exactly because you've yeah. got the ability to do that, so you'll be able to run at the run at the enemy, and then throw to get a couple of hits off. And then as you, once you've thrown your two things, then draw, you know, and then you're engaging. I'm, I'm sorting out my draw technique as well, because I got something this event for putting onto my back, for putting my weapons onto my back. I'm not planning on using it how it's intended, though. I'm planning on um, attaching it like either to maybe even to like the hero belt at the back, yeah. riveting it as low down as that or riveting it onto the side or something. So I'm planning on playing about with that to make it work so that I can draw that. Um, although the best way that I found for these is actually upside down. So instead of drawing them from your shoulders up, that's quite a difficult movement yeah. to make, but to draw them from the back down, like Legolas style, actually, if that makes sense. Yeah. I would just need to put a little clip on it so that I can unclip it and draw them down. So. Yeah. Yeah, I I'll mean, figure it out. Yeah, back scabbards are like they look cool, but they're not always the most practical thing, you know. Mm. Yeah, because I, 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 sorry, yeah, go for it. No, go ahead. 
I was just going to say um, the E1 and E2, what I struggled with was actually the weight over my hips. So because I had the hero belt and then I had my belt on that and I had two swords, a dagger, a water bottle, a pouch, um, my inhaler and my sun cream. So I had all that yeah. on this one belt. The weight over my hips caused a lot of bruising. Yeah. So I realized that my weapons, because like an easy thing was to move both the swords somewhere else yeah so i'm thinking that should make a difference um but well i mean what you could do i mean you could maybe have um the, the type of belts that that like cross each other so literally have two belts like yeah. in, a, in, a, in a yeah in a cross um kind of formation so basically looser so it goes from your hip to the top of your thigh on one side and the same on the other you know well, yeah, I'm going to sort out, um, I'm going to, to do um, thigh scabbards for next oh, yeah. time because the throwing knives, I'm going to put an um, scabbard on my thighs Yeah. because that would be a lot more comfortable there. Yeah. Looks kind of cool as well. But yeah, it'll just like, it'll be like a real sort of a real cool look. I, I'm going to look like a rogue, okay? Yeah. This well, it's going to happen. Yeah. Because I mean, we, we can, especially with the, the throne, because they're not, I don't, because they're not allowed to have a core in them because they, they've got to be a certain length. I eight think inches eight inches right so like we minimum can, eight inches yeah so we can make a ton out of like cheap craft eva foam and just make loads because you basically want to make them so you don't care if you lose them so yeah. much you know or it does it it's not like a big deal if you're like oh no i don't want to get my you know nice looking hammer back or something you just we'll just we'll just make a load and just spray paint them and um get them all all fired out for your next time well well, someone um commented um somebody in the the community who crafts um comments on our TikTok to say that Ooh. they make um throwing weapons and things like that. So I was nice. actually going to pester them. <laughs> if you're listening, <laughs> you're going to receive a message from me <laughs> pestering you <laughs> because um you mentioned a very good pattern that you may or may not have. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, I, yeah, sorry. yeah, weapons and sorry, yeah, weapons and crafting out of the way. I suppose we better get onto the. Onto the role play of this Yes. Weekend. So we, yeah, that, that took us basically up to the Friday um, uh, afternoon where, yeah, we got all our stuff on, got into kit. I put my chainmail on straight away. I was like, I just want to live in the chainmail. <laughs> yeah, you, you went for it. I didn't put my chainmail on because I was like, it was so hot as well d during <laughs> that. And I was just like, no. And I wasn't planning on doing any any skirmishing anyway so i was like nope no chainmail <laughs> did you wear did you wear the chainmail the entirety of friday yeah did you yeah oh wow well done i know right yeah and i, I know i did because there's a photograph of me in it <laughs> i was like oh i'll wear my chainmail there yeah because the thing it is was i was so going hot. into a lot of places i was like i'm just gonna be all armored up no it's fair look no, glorious fair yeah no it's fair enough um, so do, do you want to go first? I would look to be split up basically. So yeah, it's been tough, but we decided we'd stay together for the podcast. <sighs> yeah. For the, for the good of the, <laughs> for the good of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm putting on a brave face. <laughs> a brave face for the podcast. No, I mean, we went separate directions. <laughs> we went separate directions. Time in, okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. So yeah, we, um, for those of you who may remember, um, we have a test metal. And did we actually tell what the test metal was last time? Yeah, no, we definitely did. We definitely did, didn't we? Well, we can. Uh, so we can a, why don't you refresh everyone's memory? Yeah, a, a, a recap on our test metal. We were offered a test um, for a house to Sandra's, and as we are lovers in the game as well, we are not able to test into the same house as we would then be considered as brother and sister. So we're competing against one another. The idea is we need to um, collect stories of love from every nation, have these confirmed by a troubadour that they are in fact a story of love and also a story of love to Danish standards. Once one of us has collected a story from a nation, that nation is then locked out for the other person. Basically the first person to get six wins really. And um, that is what we we spent a lot of time doing. And that's what we started. We we went straight into it on the Friday. Um, no time wasted. So. There's some time wasted. 
there was some time wasted. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, so we went our separate directions. Um, I headed to Wintermark and Oliver, where did you head? I went to the league. I thought I was being clever, right? I I thought I was I thought you were going to Wintermark then Nabar. That's where I thought you were going. Um, and I went, ah, so, and I knew you didn't have like many leads. And I was like, well, well I'm going to ask We're we're testing into a house that originally came from the league. So I naively thought that league would be a quick one to get. And oh, was I wrong? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, was I wrong? Um, so yeah, I asked, I asked the, the testing, um, I asked Lupo, uh, you know, a, about the league. And then I turned it off to the league, um, but I picked up uh, I picked up a, a newer player mm -hmm. as well, um, and I was like, "Hey, I need I need some help." Um, they were a little bit not completely not at a loose end for stuff to do, but I think they wanted to go in the direction of the league as well. And I was like, "Well, I was like, you know, you can come with me, and we'll help each other." Um, <laughs> so yeah, I <laughs> ended up. Uh, Ended up going, went, went to the library. It's the first time I've ever been to the library in Anvil. So Anvil has its own library and there's like a full, like it's a full functioning working library with people like buzzing around and people coming in, asking for different books and all sorts. Um, as Oliver was very interested being like, oh, this is, this is really cool. Godric was not interested it will be there. You know, <laughs> they were like, oh, can I help you? I'm like, do you have any books with pictures in? <laughs> um, oh, also, uh, we went right one, two, three break, right? And I, I, out of character, was like, "Oh, do we have like notebooks and pens?" And you were like, "Yeah, yeah, there's some there." I had my notebook. You pissed off with the only pen that we had, and I was like, "Okay." In my defense, I when we were unpacking on the Thursday, I said to you, "Do you have a pen?" And you went, "Yeah, there was one in there. It was fine." I was like, "Are you sure?" And you were like, "Yeah." Then. I found a pen, um, I found a second pen, yeah. went to play D&D, &D. everybody was ready for D&D. &D. How convenient. No one brought pens to D&D, &D, so I brought our two pens and one of them How remained there. convenient. But I have a pretty gold pen, so I wasn't going to leave that. No. So, yeah, I, I was then, I was already in the back foot because I don't have a pen. Um, <laughs> and my no So, th this isn't, by the way, this isn't a... You know, this is not me making excuses because the, <laughs> the, the pen really affects you for the whole weekend. <laughs> yes, it did. Yes, it did. So, Every stall sold pens. Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, no, there was. Yeah, I didn't want to go and spend too much on just a pen when I'm sure we already had one. But anyway, I was already out and about before I realized that I didn't have a pen. Um, and then we ended up, I ended up in the league. And uh, yeah, that was, uh, it was an interesting trip so uh, the the league for people that ha like don't know too much about empire they're very the aesthetic is like renaissance italy um and it's like the, there's lots of like it's, it's all about kind of high uh, like high fashion and there's there's guilds um and what whatnot and you'll learn a little bit with with my story so i'm looking for stories of true love i come mm -hmm. across this place right and i actually had like a couple of Dornish people with me and there was a place with a heart on the door and I was like oh there's hearts there this must be a good place um so I sat down and the Dornish with me were like oh yeah 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 um that'll be the place you want to speak to I knew out of character what I was getting into but Godric didn't so he sat down uh, with this with this group of leagueish and they were basically a mercenary group because there's lots of mercenaries in the league because um, the league don't tend to, they basically hire out their services for the fights. So for the for like the battles and skirmishes, they will charge for their services to fight. So I I literally yeah. ended up with speaking to these mercenaries, um, and when I said I'm looking for stories of love from the league, uh, they all just laughed at me. <laughs> <laughs> they all just laughed at me, and uh, well, I actually ended up speaking to the um, the leagueish egregore. Um, and they told me a lot about, uh, the league, you know, cause they are being an agro, they had, you know, a lot of the information, um, on the league and th there's an importance around masks in the league. So when a leaguer puts a mask on, they're like, like a different person. I think that might be right. 
Uh, they don't just become a different person, but they, they have a different name. And the idea is that uh, we all wear masks um, that we present to the world outside, but only you know your real self, which was difficult for Godric to get his head around because the Dornish... I feel like I feel like the Dornish brief tells us the opposite. You know, it's it's yeah. like, um, you know, we 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 live and die for love. So you know, I'm I, so Godric sitting there being like, well, you know, I'm I'm pretty much give, I'm I'm a, an open book when it comes to me and Aaron L, and I've got all these you know this leagueish person telling me that oh, well in the league only you know yourself. You know, these are the masks that we we show each other. So we talked around in circles a little bit. It was a great game, but <laughs> for Godric, we talked around in circles. <laughs> Um, they found it very, I, I can tell they were finding it amusing, but me playing Godric very naively, they went, oh, right, well, I asked about marriage. They went, Le uh, marriage in the league is often transactional or political. Um, and I asked about love and intimacy. They said that intimacy is also quite often transactional <laughs> in, in the league. Um, and they went, you know, if you want to talk about love, um, maybe go and speak to uh, Aki Cabello, right? Um, which uh, is basically a, an escort. Um, so you, you pay them for uh, certain services. Um, so if, whether that be intimate or spending time with them or whatnot. So Godric being just naive Godric as well. Um, I got pointed to several of these Kikabeos to talk to of which I then went off and talked to. And then once again, every time I was like, hey, I'm looking for this person. And obviously they thought I was wanting their business, their custom or some of them. And they were like, oh, hello. And I was like, oh no, I'm looking for stories of love. And yeah, there was just like lots of nuance and there was lots of trying to dig through. And it, it, initially it was just like, oh yeah, you know, it's love, love really isn't a thing here. But then once you try and start digging, you find that there are these little stories. Um... One of the Kikabos made me uh, talk to a puppet. Um, that was fun. So they were, <laughs> they were like, oh, I'll tell you about love in the league. Um, but uh, I'm going to tell my friend here, which was a hand puppet of an orc. And <laughs> I'm going to tell my puppet friend and the puppet friend's going to tell you. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so while all this was going on, what were you doing, Aronel? While the league were treating Godric like Don Shimbo, I went to Wintermark. <laughs> I have a huge new love for the league <laughs> now. I'm gonna, I need to go speak to them all next time. Um, yes, yeah, so I went to Wintermark, and this is my first time at Empire wandering around by myself and going up to people. And I was quite nervous actually. I I must have circled um, Wintermark several times before I actually targeted someone. And I was like, I'm going to go speak to them. So the person I went to speak to, um, they, um, they, they, they'd been in the game for quite a while, seemed to really know their stuff. And I went up to them and was like, you know, oh, hello, I'm looking for stories of true love. And kind of had a bit of fun back and forth and everything he was very much like oh I'm too old for love and then we had a bit of like you know back and forth and then he was like oh you need to speak to the the young boys up there and this is just like what, what he said and I was like oh do they, do they have some lovely stories and he's like oh they're always singing about love they seem to be very yeah. successful and again I Robin I knew he was just you know they're obviously just a lot of talk yeah they talk, um, they talk a big game yeah basically it was quite lovely though because after a little bit he was like you know what I'm just going to take you there and he took me over to this tent of all these people and he like hushed them all and announced who I was and that I was looking for stories of love and a couple of the boys were like oh yeah we can tell you about love and of course they started I think one of them had started being like I know a story about a worm I can tell you and I was like, I don't think that's quite what I'm after. Yeah. And then he was like, <laughs> it was the way he just went, well, oh, that's, that's what they all say. <laughs> and he literally is sad. And I was like, it's okay, someday you're going to find someone that wants to hear the story about your worm. <laughs> and we had this like fun back and forth. Um, 
And then they all went, you know what, we, we, we do have a story. And they all told me a story about a wedding. And every single person there had been to this wedding. So they all had different parts of the story to tell. So it was really exciting because then, then somebody would be like, oh, and then this happened. And oh, remember this happened beforehand. And I basically got this wonderful story about someone in Wintermark um, um, declaring their love for someone else, basically, and um, getting married and making this huge event out of it. It sounded very beautiful. It, um, it, it the picture they painted me was this big, tough Wintermark warrior that you know stood up in front of all of their tough mates and went, "No, nope, I love her." And I will, you know, she she basically saying she wears the trousers here. And it was really, really interesting the way that they did it. So I got it all together, had a bit of a drink with them, had a bit of fun. <laughs> then I went back to Dawn, <laughs> um, found a lovely, lovely troubadour. Um, I'm trying to remember who we've confirmed about about whose names we yeah, can if see. You, if you don't know, don't say. I'm, I'm not going to say I don't know. Um, so um, we found a wonderful troubadour who quite happily um, listened to the story, confirmed it was of Donish standards, and he went to, um, sorry, they went to um, Lupo and confirmed it with Lupo. And um, I got the first one ticked off. Yeah, within how many hours? Like 20 minutes. Within 20 <laughs> Um, would have been about twenty minutes, I think. To be honest. <laughs> so while you were doing that, I was I was that still talking to the people in the league. Um, and again, I got great role that like this. There, this is nothing of me. This is not me complaining about like leagueish role players. Like the opposite, I was actually with a new player, um, as well that was kind of um dotting backwards and forwards. Um, and the person I was speaking to, it was quite like the role play was good, and it's like there's levels to this stuff. Like I got higher level of role play this time most definitely because my confidence level was obviously a bit higher than it had be, been in previously. Um, and the newer player came over and started speaking. And the, the newer player was very confident as well anyway. Um, but there was a few details that they didn't know. And the Kika Bayo that I was talking to um, and Empire players are very good at this because they are role players. They're all, everyone's role players there. So they want yeah. to role play with you. Um, but they are very sensitive to yeah new players that's how you play the game so uh the person i was with they went oh yeah i'm actually new to anvil and like the 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 leagueish player just toned it back instantly and was just like oh right and then explained you know what was what yeah. was actually happening so really yeah if, if you're new to anvil and you feel like the role play is a little bit um over your head as in like the, the information that's being thrown out the, like the cultural references and things like that you can literally just literally just say look I'm new to Anvil. I don't know much about the league and people will like tone it back, you know, maybe a little bit for you just to let you get your, get your foot in the door. Yeah. Anyway, um, they, they eventually felt sorry for me and they gave me a tip. They were like, Oh, well there is, there is one leagueish person, uh, that did marry outside. Cause I, I was like, would, cause I, I started getting lost and I was like, I was like, do all, well, okay. Well, if, if marriage is like in the league, do leagueish people ever mar marry into other nations? with their wedding ceremonies. And they're like, no, 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 no. And then uh, someone felt sorry for me. They were like, well, one, one did. Um, like the last the last empress actually did. Uh, so, but, you know, she married a um, Varushkin. I feel comfortable saying this because this is literally on the wiki. Um, yeah. <laughs> so she's like, oh, yeah, she married a Varushkin, <laughs> right? So I, they were like, oh, you might want to go to Varushka and <laughs> um, see if you can get that side of the story because you, you it might be difficult getting it from the league. And I was like, yeah, I'm getting that impression. So... I skipped off to Varushka and as I enter the Varushkin camp, who do I see sitting cross-legged <laughs> by the fire, listening to a story, but Aronel. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, shit. Aronel's already here. The hell? So, side for it. And meanwhile, <laughs> Aronel confirms her story. <laughs> and then I think we spoke, spoke to you a little bit and then... Um, because I think I think I actually bumped into I don't remember if I bumped into you then or I not. I didn't know. But... The first time I saw you after we split up was in Varushka. Oh, it was. So yeah, I was then like, oh well, I guess I'll um, head back out. And I was like, I know, I'm going to go and find Varushka. I've never been to Varushka before. I had no idea where I was going. 
So I stopped lots of random people being like, can you direct me to Varushka? So eventually someone directed me and I headed in. And when I was heading in, there was a big, um, I, I'm, I'm very sorry because I do not know what the celebration was that was happening. But basically yeah, there was yeah. a huge group of people. They were all singing and dancing. And then they went off to um, pretty much to like do like a march from where they were going. And then they came back and it was, it was wonderful. So I, I stood there and I, I drank some mead because Varushkins are wonderful and they offer so much. So I was offered some mead and I, I put some money into their, their, their funds. And um, yeah, I started asking about stories of love. And I was told that there's meant to be a wedding um, next summit and it's something that's been getting prepared for. Now, I was given the names and after chatting to a few people, I realized that it was going to be a nightmare trying to find the people because I couldn't find them. And I thought, you know what? There's going to be more than one love story. So why don't I look for another one? And that's when I, I saw a woman sitting outside her tent and um, I saw a, another person with them. And I... I went over and I, I just said, oh, I'm looking. I actually mentioned the wedding. I said, oh, do you know anything about this, this wedding? And they went, oh, we do, but we know another love story. Ooh. And um, they were like here and they moved to the side and gestured to sit down and um, made sure I had a notebook and everything and I was ready to go. And then they started and they, they, they told me this very well-detailed story. It was filled with... Um, tragedy and sacrifice and it was definitely filled with love love of um romantic love of course which is what I was looking for but it also had love of um an area of family of of people of, of culture it was it was beautiful it had everything and as they were finishing, they, they'd finished telling me the story and then we were just sitting, chatting, eating and drinking and, and relaxing. And that's when I see Godric come around the corner. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, hello. <laughs> so, and then I realized I was, and then I realized I was not only sitting with someone from Grishka, I was also sitting, sitting with someone from the league. Oh, the, it was wonderful. Oh, the leagueish, the leagueish person you were sat with did not have their leagueish garb on, their, their jacket on. Uh, while they were sat next to you. So I came home like, oh, the league-ish just gave me the runaround. <laughs> and oh, then they you stood up. such a mistake. Oh, they oh, just it hit my microphone out of frustration. Uh, yeah, they, they get up and then they put their, you know, the, the puffy sleeve jacket on, you know, indicating they're from the league. And I'm like, oh, great. Foot in. <laughs> so I was like, God, you can I introduce you to my new friend from the league? She's from the league. <laughs> I was like, oh, man. Damn it. Uh, I'm trying to make friends in the league. Um, yeah, I, I piggyback on onto. You. I didn't ask her for a story because that would be a little a, a bit much. Um, but I did just ask the um, the person that gave you the story about the story that I was after. Um, they said, "Oh, you want uh, that tent over there?" Uh, so, but yeah, Varushka, like again, you know, talking about the league earlier. So if you don't know much about the empire system, they're like Eastern Europe. So it's, the feel is like Eastern European. If, if Dawn is very like romantic, because this is what I really liked about in Varushka. Um, cause I didn't know much about the, the nation at all, but I, yeah. I really like the vibe in there. It's like, if you can imagine Dawn being romantic fantasy, um, Varushka is like, dark fantasy you know they're yeah. they're actually like they almost feel like two sides of the same coin almost it's it's that they're, they're very fairy tale you know but it's like eastern european fairy tale or german fairy tale in Varushka. it's like very um very bittersweet type storytelling and everything seems quite kind of dark um with like silver linings whereas dawn is very much you know the bright white cloud with flower lining <laughs> to it uh and they yeah they they steer me to this tent um and at first i was like oh yeah i don't know if i'm gonna be welcome in here and i asked and they were like oh come in come in and i came in and they had a full-on table spread um i did recognize a couple of like the players from like military council and things like that I mean, people um i introduced myself and i told them i was after a story they were like oh come take of our hospitality 
And I was like, oh, what do you have? You know, and they showed. Now, I almost went, oh, no, thank you. But luckily, luckily, I um, took some of their food and ate their food. And I felt like I was actually being quite rude because I, like, put this, like, gobstopper in my mouth. And I was like, crow, I'm here to find joy to do that. <laughs> and that's basically <laughs> what I did. This is me, right? Um, and I asked them. And I got, luckily, the person who was related to the person that whose story I was after, because they happen to be gone now, the, the, the two people involved, um, actually, like, walked into the tent. And they went, oh, this person will tell you the story. And they told me an amazing story. It was from the Varushkin side, however. It was not from the league. There was very little details from the leagueish part of the story. And I thought, oh, okay. Anyway, I had a great... And I, I got to, like, learn a lot about Varushkin culture. Like, the, you know, how they have circles. And, um, yeah, it's it's like, you know, they, they have a family unit a bit like... Uh, a bit like Dawn, you know? But it's it's almost it's like yeah. basically a house, you know? Um, and I got to learn all the differences, all the, you know, the differences in the, the cultures. Um, cause every time they were like, oh, they were part of our circle. And I was like, what's a circle? <laughs> what's, what's a this? Just asking all the questions. Um, and then I left, but the problem is I knew that Aronel was way ahead of me with a Varushkin story. So I had a Varushkin story, not a league story technically. Um, and when we got back to camp, yeah, Aronel, you found your troubadour before me. You, and... Oh, I, so I'd spent a lot of time trying to find a troubadour because yeah. there's a lot of things going on on the Friday night, which meant every time, like, it was quite funny though, because like Lupu was sitting in his tent and I was like walking past going, I'm still looking for a troubadour. And he was like, it was funny because I'd see you and then you disappear, then a troubadour would appear <laughs> and then they go, then you'd appear again. It was <laughs> running around the camp. But yeah. yes, I did find um, my wonderful troubadour. Um, again, I, um, I, I'm not sure if they're happy with names mentioned, but um, so they, they were wonderful. They actually confirmed a couple of my stories, um, but they did confirm this one. And not only did they confirm it, they said that the story I brought to them actually ticked every single box on the list for a story of Dornish standards. Yeah. So I was really happy and they instantly confirmed that with Lupo and I was all all sorted. <laughs> yeah. I think we'll, I think eventually what we'll do is we'll actually write these stories down and we'll see if we can tell them on the podcast because I gotta admit you told me that Rushkin story it is a good story. Like it, it's a very good story. <laughs> Um, it is yeah no you hit the I, i'm going to one. get in touch with them um, the people in Vrushka and um, probably next event when i can see them again in person i'm going to get some permissions and then that way i can um look at writing down these stories although the story i told had a lot of history to it it might actually even be on the wiki who knows yeah I'll it could be yeah because there was definitely some like out of character fluff in your in your story 100 oh, percent. but yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna search the wiki see if i can find any of the stories that yeah. i i did actually have but yes yeah. yeah, so that got all confirmed and then i think after that i met i met you yeah yeah and by that point i'd like i was just tired <laughs> We chilled out after that, didn't we? We, did. we went and had a beer, we yeah. relaxed and just yeah. had some in-character relaxation. Yeah. Um, yeah, like, you know what? I, n thinking now, I'm pretty sure we just like... Yeah, what did we do? Because we were still up until like late. We were going to go to Wise Guys, but we didn't. We basically were like, oh, let's go to Wise Guys. And then we sort of set up stuff at the tent. And then before we knew it, we had a lot of people there. We oh, all yeah, sat we just... down, had a drink. We shoved the fire on and basically just sat with the fire on, had a few drinks. That's right. Yeah, we just drank. And then that was that was kind of it. The, so in the, the, the wider game, it was a very active summit for Dawn uh, militarily. Um, because I, I'm not going to go into all the details. Because one, I'm crap at... Uh, I'm not qualified to talk about all this stuff. Um, but basically, yeah, uh, Dawn made like big moves in the campaign, like in the military yeah. campaign. Um, and there was a lot of skirmishes that were very Dawn centric that would help. And they were all like one after the other. So a lot of the houses were very active, um, setting up like enchantments areas. So you, you can have enchantments. Um, for people who don't play the game, you can have. Um, areas that you can set up um, to be enchanted and they were basically you, you spend some time in in that area and you get an effect um, so one of the tents had um, an enchantment on it there you, you went in you just basically had to do five minutes of role play telling stories and you got all your hit points back and all your hero points back 
that type of thing. So there was lots of actively people coming up being like, oh, we're skirmishing, we're skirmishing, do you want to skirmish? And we're like, no, <laughs> no, we don't want to skirmish. Um, so yeah, it was the, the whole nation was kind of buzzing on the Friday and there was so much going on. I will say now, and I learned this last event, is that I know you were very successful in your story gathering on Friday night. Friday is the most difficult day to get people like when that because that no one's free on friday well Everyone's we found that something. last event because remember we did that um like scavenger the hunt last garden, event yeah. and we really struggled yeah. on the friday to find anyone because basically a lot, a lot of um so my my biggest mistake uh this so my biggest mistake really with the story gathering was that forgetting a pen yeah my second biggest mistake <laughs> was <laughs> My second biggest mistake was ha like getting uh, married, excuse the pun, to a certain lead, you know, and and going, right, OK, this yeah. person has told me, oh, you want to speak to this general. They have a good story. And I spent too much time like looking for a certain general or looking for a certain person, looking for a certain senator. Look, And what I should have done is done what you did and just go, OK, I can't find them. I'm just going to ask the next random person I see. Do you have a story? Do you have a story? Instead, I kept like playing the game of like, oh, okay, they've got a cool story and I would want to try and get that story. Um, so that that's, uh, that's yeah, that was the second mistake I made because um, we're wrapping up on the Friday now. So like, yeah, yeah so th this carries on throughout the whole weekend. The third mistake I made out of character was that I wasn't prepared. Um, my, uh, my one, um, my memory um and a lot i know a lot of people have this type of memory i struggle with like instant recall so for those of you who know exactly what i mean so people will tell me their names and is instantly gone um however the following day i will remember their name and everything about them um so when people are telling me stories um people were like telling me and i'm like really engaged like oh yeah 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 and all the details and all the names in the stories is just gone um instantly and but the next day I would remember all the de the details. I'm like, oh yeah, they told me about this and that I can remember the name. Fourth mistake connected to that was that I, I didn't, I'm not very good at taking notes and I wasn't prepared to take notes and I hadn't practiced and thought about what I need. So what I should have done is go, right, okay, what do I need for a good love story? I should have gone to the troubadour or any troubadour and been like, okay, what are the parameters for a, love, a true love story in Dawn? Now, this is like quite in character, out of character as well, because I think this is a an Oliver mistake and a Godric mistake. Because it makes sense, because Godric's daft and he probably thinks he knows about true love. So what he should have done and what he's probably going to do is go to a troubadour and be like, okay, what are the parameters for a story of true love? You know, and when someone would say a certain thing like, oh, you know, there's a virtue mentioned, write that, write that down. Oh, there's like a there's uh, resistance or there's overcoming a challenge or there's a sacrifice and then write that down when I hear that part of the story. Yeah. So I can vet these stories when I'm hearing them instead of being like, right, okay, remember the story. Okay, remember it, repeat it in my head, run to someone and tell, tell the story because then you're just like playing uh, the whispers game where, yeah. <laughs> where it's just like the, the details are already, f you're just trying to remember details and you're not telling a story. So... I was worried about like embellishing and not getting all the details right. So when I was retelling stories, I'm just, I'm going, um, and then, uh, this happened. And then this happened <laughs> instead of just like creating a story with a beginning, a middle and an end, you know, I really struggle with the, the memory thing as well. Um, I am the worst in the world for names and memories, but yeah, I, I, my memory is absolutely awful, but because it's been so bad for so long, I'm used to note taking yeah. to the point where I actually I've got my own my own sort of version of shorthand that I use and I tend to be much better at note taking now which makes a big difference so I think that's what helped quite a bit yeah this is my um, note taking so like yeah it's terrible it's terrible so for those of you listening like I've got this little tiny book and it's just it's just script my handwriting's terrible anyway i don't write for work or anything in my day-to-day -day life um with a with a pen or anything and uh yeah my 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 note taking is so outrageously bad that i would look at the notes and be like what even is that what does he what does that even mean i just it doesn't even trigger anything in my memory 
whatsoever. Um, so yeah, th those were the many mistakes of of Oliver and Godric this yeah. <laughs> this, I mean, this summit. Like, because what I tend to do a lot, because I again, because my memory is super bad. Um, even when we're playing D and D or when we're doing podcasts, um, if I if you if we're in the middle of a conversation, you're talking about something, and I kind of go, oh oh yes, I I, I want to touch on that. After you've said the next line, I've totally forgotten what was just said. So I will take notes, like little reminders of things that I was wanting to add in that I I, I know I'm going to forget in a few seconds. Yeah. But then later on, I'll be like, oh, I meant to add that to that comment that you made because that was really cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, preparation um, is definitely is definitely a thing for, for next time. Um, so, I mean, that was pretty much it for the Friday. Uh, do you want to take a... Yeah, that break before we start talking about uh the rest of the weekend i'm sure if you'd like to yeah sure we'll be back in two seconds if you enjoyed this show make sure that you follow and subscribe so you know you know when a new episode is posted um you can leave a review you can share it around it would really help us out and you know we appreciate you doing that and remember you can catch us live on twitch.tv forward slash to have underscore to roll. That's the number two and, and roll is into role play. Thank you very much for listening.